high school. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Don't Quit Your Day Job podcast. I am your host, Maxim Allen, and today I am interviewing a very good friend of mine who does a million creative things. That's almost impossible to <laughs> sum up exactly what he does. But today we've got Caleb Clark on the show. Woo! What's up, y'all? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess, uh, Caleb, you do like a million things like yeah. you, you do so many things so you do like photography fashion design getting into vi- videography you do animation you yeah. work with work on music videos yeah. so much yeah <laughs> <laughs> i do a, i do a lot of different things um i i kind of i used to try and be restricted to one thing but now the more i work on stuff people are like hey um do you uh do you know how to do this? Have you ever tried this? Or I'll just I I get bored and I I have a short attention span too. So like <laughs> <laughs> I try and like just preoccupy my time with like visual things. Yeah, that's a good way to put yeah. it. It's a lot of visual stuff. Yeah, you're a visual artist of many forms. Exactly. And you're also a stand-up comedian, and yeah. <laughs> I should warn all of you tuning into this podcast, is most of the people I interview are also going to be comedians. <laughs> We're just going to be making jokes about half the stuff that we do, our passions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I guess uh, let's get, get a little bit of background in yourself. Um, where, where are you from? And uh, yeah, what, a little, like, what, what are you in a nutshell up to this point? Um... I am from Colorado. Um, oh, same. <laughs> wow. Wow. We haven't what? talked about that a million times before. <laughs> you like water, bro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was raised in Colorado. I, um, I, started, I started, honestly, crazy enough, like my first thing into art was, uh, well, my mom and my grandma always took me to art museums all the time. Even when I came to New York, I was always going to the museums. And then um, after that, I my, found out my dad used to do graffiti, and Ooh. I found one of his graffiti books. That's sick. Wow. And I taught myself how to do graffiti off of some of his uh, draft books with all his graffitis and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, from there, I was, it was down the rabbit hole. Um, I started just coloring and drawing i went to a i went to a school a magnet school like okay an art specifically yeah yeah and i auditioned to get into a like the arts program the magnus art program which was heavily based on art and that was the last time i was ever allowed to do graffiti they were like yeah you can't do that well okay so how old were you when you started doing the graffiti um i was in middle school okay and the magnet school is for high school is that how that worked yeah so you got like two years of like graffiti doing that yeah and then they were like paint this draw this bowl of fruit and i was like (laughs) you can't graffiti a bowl of fruit (laughs) (laughs) you can't spray paint that on a train (laughs) yeah (laughs) And so uh, I did that, and they it was really annoying, though, because there was this girl that drew anime all the time. Mm-hmm. Every fucking project was an anime-based thing. And, yeah. and they're like, I did a, a triptych, which is three different designs, mm-hmm. it, but that come together to make one design, and it was a gra- graffiti-based design. And they were like, yeah, you can't do that. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Ugh. She just did anime <laughs> last project, this project, and guess what? The next project is going to be a still life anime fucking fruit bowl how am i how can i not <laughs> her still life is just like a bento box like. <laughs> <laughs> with cute cutie eyes why wouldn't they let you do graffiti that seems like really just like unnecessarily discriminatory against a, just a type of art yo they, it was like they wanted i don't i don't know they said they wanted me to uh expand my boundaries but i was like that's the, i mean i i get that but like I still wanted to do um, graffiti. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I still wanted. Like I, I'm cool with expanding, but like you, I was trying to interpret graffiti with everything. But 
that kind of just died away. But also during that time, I uh, I was taking um film photography. Okay, yeah. And we had a my school had a a, a dark room, mm-hmm. and we also had a um we had a dark room. And what else did we have? We had a graphic design lab. So at that time, I wasn't good at photoshop but i knew how photoshop works so i worked with one of my best friends and she i told her i after i figured out like basically i don't know i i like i like using computers and everything and i I, after i figured out how photoshop worked with layers and how you could cut stuff out Mm -hmm. my mind was just running a million miles per hour after that and i made like for one of my projects i made a uh i took a photo where i was sitting at the table arguing with myself Mm -hmm. and my prophet my teacher was like wow caleb how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? She, and, like, and she taught me how to do all the things that I was doing. And uh, from there, it kind of, uh, I like doing photo manipulation and um, photography and figuring out you can manipulate your photos with Photoshop, which is pretty fun. But I didn't, I stopped doing graphic design up until then when I went to like, when did I? I started I started doing a little bit more illustration mm-hmm. after I went to a concert in high school. A yeah. concert? Yeah, I took, a, I took a photo of my favorite rapper, and then I started drawing on it. Oh. And he, I posted it on Instagram, and he like shared it. He Ooh. put it on his Instagram, and I was like, wow, people like this? And then... <laughs> <laughs> which uh which rapper was it um he's from california his name is so i like a lot of west coast music mm-hmm. and um his name was david steezy okay cool dude filipino rapper hot bars um <laughs> hpk gang what's good and um and i am sue and all these other people but um i just took a picture of him and it, it came out really cool and i from like from from messing around with with, with uh film photography I just started um, sh- carrying a camera around, and I would just shoot stuff. I didn't know why I was shooting stuff, but I would just shoot stuff. And um, I started to like learn more about it. I wasn't editing photos. I had no idea what Lightroom was or any of these editing right. things. Yeah, just things shooting were, an auto yeah. JPEG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, am I like even growing up? My dad always had cameras mm-hmm. around, so yeah, I was able to uh, learn about uh. I was always around a, a camera to like shoot and just fuck around with. So I didn't, I never knew what I was doing. And then took me to going to, uh, even though I kind of learned how a camera worked in high school. I'm not going to say that my te- my photography teacher was bad, but she was a ditzy lady. So we <laughs> were, there was a lot of people just fucking around half the time. Yeah. Like with chemicals, like those chemicals that you use in dark rooms. Oh. We should not have been around those chemicals. <laughs> But um yeah, and then from there I um I went to college for graphic design and then I said fuck that. I don't want to be behind a computer mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. Yeah. Ended up learning I stopped that major, did journalism, ended up being behind a computer doing graphic design anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't choose this life, it chose me. Wow. So you you've been like doing so much from such a young age, like doing all these little pieces. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been in New York City now? Like I talked to my mom last week. It was a year and a half, eight months, and I think she said like two weeks. Okay. Yeah. It's been a like, while. Yeah. Okay. So w- part of your why did you move to New York City? What was like I know like m- like I moved here for yeah. comedy. A lot of people here move here for the creative scene. Yeah. Was there a specific type of thing that you were into um, and chasing after? Or? Well, yeah, I um when I left Colorado, I was leaving a full-time job as a content creator as a at a lumber yard. At a lumber yard? Yeah, tell bro. me about this. <laughs> well, I could tell you about some wood. This right here? <laughs> genuine wood right here. You can tell by uh the grain. By the way it is. And by the way you can tell by the way it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um no, yeah, I was working at a I never knew you could make so much content or know so much about wood, but I was hanging around, hanging around people that could look at a fence post and tell you what type of tree like 
breed or strain of tree that is. <laughs> what kind of breed of breed tree? of tree? Yeah, I'm a tree breeder. So just, what what was your like content creation like? What were you making? Were you doing just uh, like like social media type posts? Yeah. Like so, I did social media management and content creation. So I would go out and take. So they did wood, lumber and granite and marble. So I would go and I would take pictures of the marble slabs. Okay. Figure out how to make that interesting. Throw a little copy on there. That's a industry talk for words. <laughs> <laughs> um, throw a copy on that. I would um, go and my 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 boss was a huge fan of Gary V. Gary Vandercheck. Oh God, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> and he was like, "How do you make wood interesting? You go where wood is being used and t- and talk to people who like that wood that wood shit." So. <laughs> I was talking to a whole bunch of contractors about projects. I would record them and interview them. Mm -hmm. And that's also, that's where I learned. I mean, I learned a little bit in school about like recording and interviewing, but like that job showed me how to record audio and, um, and like shoot in an interview type of setting and everything like that. And from there, I, (laughs) about wood. I love this because it's like this, like if this were any other, like, famous creator story <laughs> it, like the it's like your first job like and this is the place where i learned the skills that would help me for the rest of my career and yours is about lumber yeah. like who are these people who have <laughs> who has more than five minutes to talk about about Yo, lumber like that's hilarious i talked to this dude about this deck that he was building for like 20 minutes and it was just like in my mind, I was like, "Yo, this dude is getting super horny over this wood right now, like horny for wood." Like, wow! He was, but it was <laughs> it was cool. I liked it because even though I wasn't a huge fan of wood at the time, now I'm a huge fan of it. Love it. Whenever I see a forest, slow clap the whole entire time. <laughs> um, no, it was just cool to see people being passionate about something. And um, even though I wasn't into landscaping at that well i'm still not but i like uh, (laughs) i like i like being around passionate people regardless of what they're passionate about and that was that was really cool motive like what was motivational for me and um basically some crazy stuff happened while i lived in colorado before i left like my car getting stolen Mm -hmm. and all my equipment being in my car and i was just like fuck it i like i didn't even like that job to begin with um also, before I, before I, the right before I left, I worked in an ice cream parlor tattoo shop. It was one in the same. That's dope. That's pretty cool. It was really cool. Did you do any, any tattoo art while you're there? Or? Um, <laughs> no, unfortunately no. <laughs> not. I, and it was really hard because like I like tattoos. I have a couple and I wanted to get more. And it, that was the ultimate self control because I got, they, they, all the tattoo artists were like, hey, Caleb, free tattoos, man, whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, I want that. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, that was that was fun too. I got to I, I made a vinyl wrap for ice cream trucks for uh for freezers and everything. And the guy that um that was there before the whose job I took, he I wasn't I didn't know how to do graphic design before then. And then that guy was top, took a master class by Virgil Abloh mm-hmm. and he passed away. Um, rest in peace, Drew. And he, I, I had to go through all his files and figure and deconstruct how he made all of them. Yeah. So I, then I was able to learn how to do some aspects of graphic design on a program on Adobe Illustrator. And from there, I was able to like start getting better at graphic design and everything. And then after that, I kind of, me and the, the, the tattoo ice cream parlor thingy, we kind of just were at a, a moment where like, yeah. I don't like it here. You don't like me here. Let's just, <laughs> let's just next week. I won't show up. How about yeah. that? <laughs> and that was, that was cool. It was a mutual understanding, but um, I still love those guys. Um, Drawing a blank at, Oh, custom ink in Colorado. If you ever okay. go to custom ink, um, that's in Colorado Springs. It's or? in Denver. Oh, okay. Um, The owner's name is Yayo. Coolest, scary looking dude ever. Super <laughs> fucking nice. Um, but yeah, after that, I I did I did all that stuff, and then I I kind of I got tired of working at these jobs where I was basically behind a computer all the time working on projects that I wasn't necessarily interested in mm-hmm. or exciting about excited about. Even though you think I, I I did like working with ice cream brands that yeah. that was fun. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. and the free ice cream it was gourmet ice cream. 
and so um i i I just i packed up all my stuff i could either buy a new car or just go to new york yeah i was like i don't want to pay for like i want to i don't want to buy a new car i just fuck it i'll go to new york and then from there um before i left I, i locked down an internship as a stylist assistant okay um and uh i have a i had a i have a clothing brand <laughs> i got i made a clothing brand when I, while i was in college called cones collective okay. and it's still around right now but um from there making that brand i i had to wear a lot of different hats doing branding brand anything that had to do with branding writing copy for brand brands i co-designed the the streetwear and clothing the clothing and stuff i was in charge of setting up the photo shoots the website make the product shots all of that and so i would had a good idea of how to and i was i was scouting models for my brand because i wanted it to be for everybody so i was always mm-hmm. like yeah on the look and then during the shoots i would be shooting people and i didn't have an assistant or anything i had my business partner and he he i mean he was there he he did he, i'm not gonna say he didn't do anything because he did a lot but i it, the anything visual that was for the brand was my department so i learned how to style do set design come up with concepts for designs i was using pinterest a lot because i'm a visual thinker and i need a some people can't envision what I see, so I had to share like a yeah. Pinterest board. And I'm like, this is what I, this is what's in my mind's eye right, yeah, right yeah. now. So, um, I wow. was able to do that, and I got this internship working as a stylist, and I did that for a little bit, and um, it was fun. It was fun. I learned a lot about the fashion industry or the styling industry or styling place, and just meeting people, networking from there, and. Then I started um, teaching coding and uh, <laughs> what? Oh my god, this is the this is crazy. I'm like, there. I knew coming in here, I was like, Caleb's gonna have a lot to talk about. I didn't realize it was gonna be like this much. Like I feel like, like as a whole, you're just like a standalone like content creation business. Like every single aspect of it: graphic design, photography, yeah. doing fashion, like yeah like it's it's crazy i'm <laughs> like <laughs> this is a lot to juggle yeah it was so yeah it, it it is it does get like that sometimes and it's just like now i now right now i've been working on just focusing on the task at hand like all right i've gotten all my photography laid out the different styles what i like doing what i'm what do i enjoy doing and all this stuff and um now <laughs> the coding came from i was working I met this guy and he's like, yo, I I know hearing you talk, you sound like you understand how like programs and computers work. And I was like, yeah, he's like, you know how to do graphic design. I was like, yeah. He's like, do you want to ch- teach you um, UI design, user interface design to high schoolers? And I was like, never done that. And he's like, oh, trust me, I'll show you how. And then like, <laughs> I met him in a Starbucks. He showed me these programs and I was like, OK, I totally get how all of this works. Yeah. And um, I was uh, for 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 the rest of that the first year I was here in New York I was teaching to make money I was teaching high schoolers how to um, code. Okay. Or not yeah. code necessarily, just do you um front front design for apps. Gotcha. And, and so front end Inter- like, like interface, yeah, interface stuff. Yeah. Okay. And so that was really cool, and it it showed me that a lot of the stuff that I I learned before I can. I didn't realize it until then, but I, I was like, oh, I can build on all of this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so then I, after that, I never was intimidated again when it came to like t- taking on a project. Like right. if somebody asked me, oh, do you know how to do that? If I have a basic idea of how to do it, I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. You just say yes to yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yes to a lot of stuff and then go to YouTube Academy for everything else. Yeah, right. <laughs> Unless it's coding. Then I have a couple, <laughs> I'll, I'll like, I have a couple of people that I use for like coding, like I'll write something or I'll, I'll read, <laughs> I'll literally do research to write, learn how to write this type of code for like that type of thing. And then if it doesn't work, I'll send it the code to my friend and be like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> You're just outsourcing all your coding yeah, work. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel that. I like, like coding for me. I just, 
I hate writing fresh code. Like I hate starting from scratch and making stuff. Yeah. But if someone hands me a code yeah. and is like, "Hey, will you fix this or make it do this thing too?" Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, "Okay, yeah." Yeah, you're like, "Sure, no problem." But that comes with a lot of copy pasting yeah. lines. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Put that there. This there. I don't need that. Yep. Exactly. So like, I'm guessing like during this whole whole time, like during the whole move, like you were working on like independent projects and projects here and there and stuff, right? Um. Not so much. So really? like, really, I, when I graduated, I uh, when I graduated college, I was like, I wasn't homeless. I was I had a job on salary. So I, okay. but I was couch surfing. So I was like the most like I was the richest couch surfer ever. <laughs> and because I lived in Denver and rent was just too expensive. So like part of the part of. Like part of being creative is like also having for well important for that was important for me is having your own space to be creative in. And yeah. at that moment, I didn't necessarily have my own space to be creative in. Oh, uh, okay. So I was, it was like, it was a hard, a little hard for me to expressively be creative, except for I was doing, I, I was still doing designing for my clo- clothing brand. So I could like go over to my homie's house. But that was like an hour away from where I lived. So okay. I had to like make time. But I, when I was there, I could like relax mm-hmm. and design for like two or three hours and come up with these like concepts for the brand. So like, I guess let's dig into that a little bit. How like for your clothing brand, you said it's Cones Collective, right? Yeah. And it's all like, if I remember, it's all ice cream thing. Yeah, ice yeah. cream, weed related. Yeah. <laughs> So what kind of what kind of goes I guess like I don't really know anything about clothing design. Yeah. What kind of goes into it? Like what what's what are like the I guess what what do you try when you're going for a design? What are like things you avoid and things you try to do? Like things you consider every time when you go into it. Um Well, first thing I consider is what I wear it. Yeah. And I w- I only make things that I would wear opposed to like just making things that I think look cool. Yeah. And um, I have a growing up, I was a huge fan of like certain streetwear brands that use specific colors and like different techniques. And I would um make sure that I I kept it close to home. Like I would always like I was always looking at different brands. And um, seeing everything that they were doing. And I I basically, it went, the things not to do is just to like be aware of how much money you're trying to spend on like everything. So we would budget like, how much are we going to spend on t-shirts? All mm-hmm. right. How much are we going to spend on this design? Well, then if we're going to spend like 15 to $20 on the design, what type of application are we going to use? Are we going to use heat press, screen print, embroidery? Mm-hmm. Are we going to use DGD, direct to garment? Or G D whatever it is. D T G. Yeah, yeah. D T G that <laughs> direct to garment. Are we gonna try and go overseas? And then it was just like learning how to it's important to you shouldn't let the cost dictate how much you, how you do the design, but it's something that you should definitely keep in mind because there was a lot of designs that we still have that we couldn't do because it just for the amount of clothes we were going to make, it just wasn't cost effective. Like right. I would have had to sell every shirt at like $70. Yeah. And like that, that's not what I'm trying to do. It's not right. why I, I got into it. And so um, it was, and then also um, I, working with somebody else is very, very helpful. And like with my business partner, Corbin, he, um, we kind of, we were like the yin, yin and yang, like, yeah. He was OCD and I'm literally the opposite of yeah. OCD. <laughs> and I um and so we were able to like check each other mm-hmm. and um and it was it's like when you're when you're making something with somebody else even if it's not your idea it's just like it's it teaches you how to actively listen and instead of saying no it was you'd have to say no but what if. Yeah. But no instead of you can't shut it down like and then if you wanted to say no to an idea that I didn't, because we would argue about stuff, but it was always, always about the brand and it never got personal. Yeah. And it was just like, all right, I don't, th- I don't want to do this design because X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And mm-hmm. then you state your claim and then you have to like separate yourself just because you like your design. I like my design better. What he said was 
basically his design was more cost effective we would make more money if we went with his opposed to mine boom that's and then you're like yeah. and then you have to think for the greater good of the brand and it, it's kind of like taking your ego out of the uh the decision making right. process right and um yeah so it, it it was a it's cool there's a there's there's a lot and then like also just like being realistic about how uh how much you you make because like clothing is not like a huge profit turnaround like most yeah. clothing companies i know independent types yeah kind of break even plus like a little bit yeah not... it does essentially and so like yeah that was basically essentially how it, like most of the time the brand was able to pay for itself so right. i didn't like i i tell i make a joke about like the brand was made on uh drug money and blood money because <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were uh, we were out here there uh in trapping and i was donating plasma <laughs> really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but putting it towards a brand while i was in college i would just go to the uh the the blood blimp bank and i'm like yo let's get it and they yo i i'm happy i don't have to sell plasma anymore that was that's a weird feel have you ever done that no i've never been that broke <laughs> i've had friends that did it i've had yeah. friends that were like i want to go donate plasma again but they're making me wait two weeks yeah. for my blood to heal <laughs> yeah like, no what? <laughs> it's a crazy and like being in there is a, it, it's, it's that's just a crazy concept like a yeah blood bank and everything but like hey. yeah you know, there's some old witch in the back of those places that's just like <laughs> bathing in it. <laughs> she's bathing in it. She's just cooking in her cauldron. Just... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I um, we it was just being more aware, being realistic, and thinking about how much um how much you're gonna make. Cause like for for four twenty, I we designed this jacket, and the jacket design sold out in under like two hours and i didn't even get to put it online holy crap we just like we pulled up to an event and it just (laughs) i still don't think we were able to put it online because we did a we i don't everything was limited quantity so cones collective stands and let me i guess i'll talk about the brand a little bit cones collective we had two mantras that we designed behind connect to create and keep one cone right (laughs) Hey, you, you get it. <laughs> and so connect to create is literally um because it was the the founders, me and Corbin, two people, C and C. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Caleb and Corbin. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, two people coming together, two completely different backgrounds. Um, Corbin was, came from a, a a generations of embroiderers. Like Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. All, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to talk to him. <laughs> yeah. All his family were embroiders. He did. He went to. He got his degree in sculpture, sculpting. Okay. And so, um, and then I mean, I got my degree in journalism mm-hmm. and PR and advertising, minor in communications and graphic design, whatever. But he, um, we we came together and we were able to, um, with different backgrounds, similar kind of tastes and brands. Like we like certain things, but we were came come came together and created something good dope and awesome yeah and you don't necessarily i the message was just basically you don't necessarily need to be a creative person to connect and create but you should like because scientists are creative in their own way and Mm -hmm. they connect and create with other scientists or people in that realm so like just opening up your mind to connecting and creating with people i i I enjoyed i always enjoy talking to people who do completely different things just Mm -hmm. because they'll give me a perspective that I never had and I'm able to create from an, I'm able to approach something from a different angle than I would normally. Right. Well, good job. Cause that's exactly what this show is about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I guess, so what was the, what was the moment that you guys were like, let's start a clothing brand. Like what was the, um, how did that originate? So it happened. We had a group of friends and um well we both i I met him i met him through wearing a t-shirt so i was i it was my first week on campus and um i saw him wearing a a t-shirt from a a specific brand that i like that was kind of low-key yeah pink dolphin at the time now they're kind of big but um there was like it was still low-key at the time i was like yo bro i fuck with i fuck with pink dolphin then we just started chatting my i was with my best friend at the time they play baseball 
He played baseball. I kind of played baseball. I just like stealing <laughs> bases. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I we would just hang out and smoke, and then um, we would talk about clothing. And then I uh, he told me about his clothing brand that he had, uh, and I a design that he had. We were all just smoking, just chatting, and he told me about this brand called Alati Industries, and I was like, that is a terrible idea that i do not get the brand at all like and i and I, I told him that and but it like him sharing that with me was showed me that he was open to um make it like he was open to brand he had the a brand in and in, in mind and he wanted to do something yeah along yeah. the lines and i um like a couple months later like I didn't. I wasn't hanging out with any of those guys anymore. But okay. Corbin would always hit me up, like, "Hey, bro, come over, smoke, let's talk, let's do all this stuff." And I was like, "Why does he keep on? I, I'm not hanging out with everybody, anymore, but he keeps on hitting me up." And so I came, I pulled up, and we st- we continued to talk about brands. And I basically, I told him because he was a uh, he liked he was growing weed at the time, and I was like, "What what's important to you?" And he's like, "Well, I like weed," and um. And I like, and I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, I like weed too, but I already have dreads, bro. Like, I can't walk around with a <laughs> marijuana. And like, that's, it's, I think Colorado gives like, makes people who smoke weed, give, like, give us, gives us a bad name just because it's just like yeah. a dirty hippie stoner. I had a buddy with dreads who actually cut them off because he was sick of people asking him for yeah. weed. He didn't yeah. even smoke. He's just like, I don't have weed, man. Yo, I just people, have dreads. Uh, couple, couples come up to me all the time and ask me for weed. <laughs> and i'm just like always couples yeah it'll be a cu- it's usually a couple who like who's having a good time they're a little lit they're like hey you, you got any weed and i'm like how much are you trying to spend <laughs> like, oh i thought it was free i'm like what, what does this look like yeah. no um no so i told him that if he wanted to do I, i'd help him make a, a brand about weed but it can't be purely like if he wants me to be fully involved it can't it can't be just about like weed because right like, yeah it's just cliche I, I, yeah i feel like the weed culture too like, yeah there's like actual like people who smoke weed and then there's like spencer's gifts like weed culture yeah and that, it's just that type cheesy. of stuff it's just yeah it's cheesy it, it like cheapens the brand yeah like i think if i see someone with weed socks every once in a while i'm like that's kind of fun but yeah. if their whole outfit is weed we, theme yeah, i'm like all right ugh. cool off a little bit like, 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 i smoke weed and i wouldn't want to talk to you <laughs> yeah but um <laughs> so i uh I I so and he 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 was like okay cool and so like I I talked to him I gave him a couple of ideas and some things to think about while mm-hmm. and I didn't talk to him for a full summer like okay school ended wow. didn't talk to him for a full summer August rolls around he's like hey are you in town I want to show you something I pull up and we're we're smoking a fat joint and he was like he shows me his his sketchbook and he's like all right so I have an idea but I don't know how to do it mm-hmm. and it was like it was it was like I like these joints dipped in ice cream and all this stuff, but there was no like name for it. There was no concept. Okay. And so I sat, we, I sat and I looked through the book for like 30 minutes and we were smoking there. And I was like, all right, so this is what, this is what we can do. We, Cause we, when you call in Colorado, if I say a cone, mm-hmm. that, that can mean you, and he, he was an ice cream fiend. Let me just say this. Corbin loves fucking ice cream. Like <laughs> that man, I, now I came into an ice cream fanatic. I'm an ice cream connoisseur now, but, um, he, it was just all these marijuana related ice cream doodles and drawings. And I was able to come up with this like double entendre of cones. When I say cones right. to people who, who smoke weed, you automatically know what I'm talking about. But if right. I say, Hey mom, let's go grab a cone. She's instantly going to think ice cream. Right. So it was this like family friendly version of marijuana and it didn't necessarily <laughs> need to be like all about marijuana all the time. Right. It's 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 marijuana you can wear to church. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so like it's marijuana that actually people would want to wear. It's like the right, cooler right. version. And so it's more subtle and yeah. it, but it still has that implication. Yes. And so I from there after I, I came up with um came up with that like and I, I don't want to say that I came up with the whole thing because we literally it was like a baseball type of thing I came up with a, an idea I threw it at him he came up with a he added something on the idea and then he threw it at me and then it was kind of just like pushing boulder sized snowballs that's awesome to each other yeah and, that's a great way to like come up with a, any type of like project yeah like if you're collaborating it makes it so much easier when you have that 
clear back and forth and you yeah. can like get those perspectives in it. Exactly. And then I um my mom was an entrepreneur. So like okay. she like I would watch her and she I always talk to her about this. I'm like, yo, how did you understand how to use computers like and all this other stuff? Cause my I learned my basic understanding of computers and stuff and files and how all that stuff worked was having an Android hashtag emulators. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. <laughs> and um just files and stuff like that, which my mom showed me how to do. And she would, she made a web, she made her own website and stuff like that. And I was, is easy to see how all this worked. And I had growing up in high school, I had friends who made their brands and I saw how they used, like, I think big cartel was one of the things that they used. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shopify was just coming out and I was able to, um, after using one, you kind of get the hang of using all the other ones. And so I was like, all right, bro, I'll make the website we'll we'll design the clothes together you i want to learn how to make clothes because i didn't know understand any of the applications and um his family just had like equipment clothing equipment laying around <laughs> from their decades in the embroidery uh, yeah. business yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. so his grandma gave him an embroidery machine i think and uh and oh, oh, also, fun fact, I came up with another clothing brand before this because he was like, oh, I want to make a brand. And he, Corbin made his money through dog racing before it was illegal. Through dog racing? Yes. He, what? Ew. He was, a, he, <laughs> he was a, a child prodigy of dog racing. A ch okay. <laughs> he, he was in the newspaper and um, it was called, the article was called Corbin's uh, Lucky Seven. Because he had seven Doberman dogs that would always win, like they would always fucking win. And there was an article about it. He that's how he paid his way through college. Are he you made serious? So much fucking money from this. That's insane. And so what a unique like yo, <laughs> story. Oh my god. <laughs> and so I came up with a brand um called um Corbin. Uh, it was either called Clover Lucky Seven Clover or Corbin's Lucky Seven. Okay, yeah. And I came up with um I came up with. Because when dog racing is like horse racing and each number gets its own type of pattern or design. Right, right, right. I was doing research about dog racing, about the, the, all this stuff. <laughs> and so I came up because he was like, oh, I want to make a brand. So I came up with a brand for him. Like he like he told me his idea. He told me his we were smoking with our friends and they told me his background. And then I did some more research on myself because I was like, that is insane. Dog yeah. racing. What? <laughs> Stranger than fiction. Yeah. <laughs> and so like I came up with this brand and he. He's like, yo, this is really fucking cool, but this isn't what I want to do. And then we talked about this other brand. And then three or four months later, Cones was made. And then we started in January 2016. Nice. Cool. So what was what was like your first big like triumph moment? Do you remember like selling your first shirt? And like, yeah. Yeah. What was that like? Um, it was it was weird. It was. I think the birth, the first triumph moment for me was like seeing people that I don't know wear wear it. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's like there's nothing. It's a surreal feeling when you have an idea and you see other people wearing it, which validates this idea. And it was yeah, just like yeah. that. That concept was like insane. And it shoot, I still go back to Denver, and I still still I still see see people wearing like cones hats here and there yeah yeah and it, like or my friends will send me pictures of like random people on the bus wearing a hat <laughs> and i'm just like yo that is insane and um yeah it was just like doing like that was a really big moment for me is just like having seeing my ideas being validated and um appreciated and people getting even more excited than I was. I'm like, yo, I made the thing and you're more excited than me. How the fuck? <laughs> you're like, oh, what's next? What are you guys gonna do next? Da, 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 da. And so um and then also, yeah, it was that was that was kind of like the biggest big moment for us. And then <clears throat> the second one was making the um making stuff that was selling out. Like mm -hmm. that was a that's I have a I have a lot of friends who make art and clothing and stuff. And um it's just like a it's like a goal that you like you kind you always hear about people selling out and everything and yeah it was just from there like selling out you're like well if I can sell it on this then like that means like I can it's almost like I can do almost anything now I can make anything and people are gonna like gravitate towards it if I just market it and brand it right right 
And so that was a, it was a really big moment for both of us. But so, yeah. So what was your like marketing step? Like how did you get people to find out about this brand? Um, so I, I forgot, um, what it's called, the industry stock talk for it, but I, um, I was learning about this while I was in, so I went to PR and advertising. So I learned a lot about like different types of, um, marketing, um, styles and like st- strategies and everything. Yeah. And for us to get hit the ball rolling, like from becoming this no name brand. Th- okay. There's a couple of ways that I came up with it. <laughs> okay. So people people are going to people will only buy things people will buy things from you for three reasons because they like you, they need it, or they um forgot the fucking third one. Oh, it's the third one. It's the three like selling thingies. Anyways, it's they for a good cause yeah, or something. I don't know. It, it's it's something they need it, they like you or it's um they um ah fucking a whatever (laughs) so i realized i need to get hit one of these three and also i needed to get somebody that um somebody in that was well known in the area yeah to start like talking about it wearing it and all this stuff okay so i found this um i i reached out to this artist this local artist Mm -hmm. named trace chapman and he um in colorado the music music scene in colorado is really like everybody Colorado is really cool because it's one of the number one states that um, support local businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Definitely. The, and so I was able to, um, and people, they, they fucked with Trace. And so I, I reached out to Trace and our designs were, like, I, my first t-shirt was pink. Like, it had a pink design on it. Okay. And, like, so I was very, like, mine and Corbin's style were very out there in your face, but, like, colorful, playful, but it was about fucking smoking weed and everybody yeah. likes weed. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, or ice cream and how do you say no to a cone, uh, a ice cream cone? And so, um, I teamed up with Trace Chapman and, um, I was, I would give him stuff. I would do some of his branding and stuff for his own, okay. his own music stuff. And I, the art style that we made was, um, very distinct and it, ha- it was very stylish. Yeah. And so like anytime we made something, like we designed his album covers, I think, and we we made merch for him and all this other stuff. But working with him gave us a platform, and then we would go to um these musical shows. We go to concerts and stuff like that. There was a um venues, and we would set up a table at the venue, and people would come see the brand. And like, oh, are you with somebody? Or who? Sometimes our Trace would be there. Sometimes Trace wouldn't be there. But we were just setting up, and we would talk to people, and it was the um. That that helped, and because people generally, if they, they met me or Corbin, they 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 fucked with us. We were yeah, pretty yeah. cool dudes, and, and they, they needed their weed merch. Exactly, <laughs> they're like, "Yo, I've been looking for a T-shirt about weed that I can wear with my around my mom." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and then I guess another reason why I knew I was doing something right is when my mom, who's like staunchly against like smoking weed or any yeah, type yeah, of yeah. drug stuff she was like oh that's cute can i have one <laughs> got like, her what <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um but yeah i it was working with um working with somebody who's already established definitely helped get the ball rolling and then right that also, makes sense it, it like it made it got everybody looking at us and then as like, we kept on producing really interesting quality stuff and that from there established us and so we were we were respected and like actually i mean we still are respected i mean if i drop something probably like next week it would people would there'd be a couple people out there horny for it nice so do you have an instagram for it still yes is it literally just cones collective yes it is i'm gonna pull it up excuse the pause in the podcast but yeah, I I'm I'm curious to see what your designs are like. I know you showed you wore one here the other day, yeah. and you were just like it was some like uh, white and pink like mesh jacket. And it's, yeah. <laughs> in New, in New York City at this time, it's ninety degrees with ninety like ninety percent humidity, yeah. and you come in, you're like it's like wearing a trash bag. I gotta take it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, this is some pretty dope stuff. Yeah, you guys should check it out. Cones Collective on Instagram. I love the uh, melting characters, the melting letters. It's a good style. I'm going to probably have to buy one of these, honestly. Hell yeah. (laughs) Thank you. Dope. Awesome. So so 
this is still going on kind of here and there, right? Yeah, yeah. We kind of like, we took a high, we're on hiatus right now. After I moved, we saw, I mean, I still talk to Corbin all the time. After I moved, we kind of just were like, all right, like, we're in two different places in our life right now. I yeah. still like making shit with you. He still likes making shit with me. And we kind of were, were like, all right, let's focus on, let's, it's time, we got to refocus on ourselves. So then we can figure when we come back to the table, we have all these new skills. We have all these other things. I'm, we still keep in contact. We still sh- talk shit about different brands and all this. <laughs> and talk about shoes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so like, um, I mean, it was just like, all right. And then the, the uh, pandemic ha- happened. And so it kind of just like, I know brands are releasing stuff and everything. Yeah. Still, but it for us to do what we want to do, like it, it just doesn't necessarily make sense for us to um, release anything right now. I mean, we could, and also we, we changed our um, we changed our marketing strategy because mm-hmm. before we were making everything uh, limited quantity, right? And so, like, once we made it one time, we wouldn't go back to that, and everything right. was a collection. So, right, right, right. We learned that one of the things that I I didn't like about that we both didn't like about brands is that the fact that if I bought if I made this shirt five months from now you could buy the same shirt and you wouldn't know and like it it kind of ruined the everybody wants to spill spe- feel special and right, like, right. If you and me can get the same thing it doesn't like feel as special so you want to start doing quantity one releases if <laughs> one of these yeah. t-shirts it's six thousand dollars yeah. <laughs> so now we basically are going to make one or two one for him one for me and then open the door take pictures do all that stuff and then open the door for orders uh, so it's not like, oh, we're only doing a hundred of these. We're going to mm-hmm. do the promo mm-hmm. and then you can place an order within this window mm-hmm. and we'll make everybody. Exactly. That's a that's a great idea. And so it saves. So now I don't have a, a back end of just shit right. sitting there because like right now <laughs> I, I have a whole bunch of like stuff from our last collection that I still have to get rid of. Is it here in Brooklyn? Yes, it is. I'm going to have to take a peek yeah, at that for I sure. I got you, bro. I got <laughs> awesome. tons of hoodies. <laughs> Um, you know me, I'm a, I'm a big hoodie guy, <laughs> big hoodie guy. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, it's, it, and that's like, like, it's nice to have stuff laying around, but like, you don't want it laying around for too long. And so that's what, one of the things that we learned. And then a lot, cause once, once I started doing it, a lot of my friends started like, I mean, they, they were, they have their own different styles and brands and everything, but they started doing clothing and everything too. And that's one thing that they learned from us is because sometimes some collections we would have, it wouldn't sell as fast as the other collections. Right. So we would have this, we would, and we wouldn't be able to make anything until we got rid of the old stuff. Right. And they were able to see that. And so now they just started doing limited or made to order. And then we saw them. We're like, Oh, you know what? You guys are right. That's smart. (laughs) So we're like, we're going to do that now. So once everything starts, we already like, (laughs) We already talked. The next thing that we're going to drop is like a straight denim collection. Whoa. So we're going to do jeans, Canadian jackets. Tuxedos. Yeah, t- Canadian tuxedos. <laughs> oh, I want to see if we can do some denim shirts. But screen printing now, we have our own screen printer. Okay. So like, and um, our we have a really cool design that I really fucking love. It's just an arch logo with a, and it's a cool font typeface and everything. Corbin, mm-hmm. Corbin made it up. And um. We're just gonna be putting that on certain things and having color. We we pride ourselves on our colors, and I I do I do the colors. So like Corbin just loves. He's a colorful guy. If you saw him, he looked like someone hit him with a Christmas tree. <laughs> That's how many colors, but like a swaggy Christmas tree. Okay. But yeah, he's a he's he's a he's an interesting dresser. I'm a little bit more reserved with when I. I mean, you see me. I'll, I'll wear some shit. I'll, I'll stunt. Yeah. I'll stunt. But like, yeah. Yeah, you're the type of person that walks into the open mic and everyone looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always excited. I'm like, what's Caleb gonna wear today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, guys, eyes up here. Listen to my what? Vo- look at my mouth, not my clothes. Okay, guys. All right. <laughs> um. But yeah. So I. Yeah. That's basically what um what we've what what we've been doing with cones recently. That's awesome. Yeah. And so you ha- you haven't been doing like much of that since you've been in New York City because of the reasons you you yeah. detailed. So like what have you been up to now? You uh, here we go. We're going to the yeah. next section <laughs> yeah. of the podcast. We're getting to everything else. Um, um but real quick actually because I, f- I forgot this up top. Uh mm-hmm. what's your Instagram? What are your plugs? Um it's Centric Vibes, C E N T R I 
All right. It's C-E-N-T-R-I-C-V-I-B-E-S. Centric, but with a C. Um, and then my no, my one, my other one is Caleb makes sense. It's nice and simple. You can literally just type in Caleb period makes period sense. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, those are my two handles. And then Cones Collective, most definitely. Um, check them out. Say hi. Let me know what you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll get into the stuff you've been doing recently. So. Yeah. You've been, as long as I've known you, you've been doing like a lot of photography and a little yeah. bit of videography here yeah. and there. And you've recently got into animation. Yeah. What do you want to start with? We got so many options. Um, I guess we can start with photography. Okay. And then go into videography. Um, I uh, well, I've I've been doing photography for a while. Um, when I was in college, I worked for the studio, the the head, like the the head guy of photography. So, um, for the, like the whole entire school and I got to like play with all these expensive, like strobes, like I was in the photography studio and then I was taking classes at the time. So Mm -hmm. I was working and learning about all the tools that I was using and that was really fun and amazing. And then that's when I first learned about DSLR cameras. Okay. And, uh, I had, cause before I was shooting with a T5i and I, uh, Canon T5i. And then my boss had the the ten D X. Okay, it was like a expensive ass camera, and he's like, "Hey, I'm just gonna stay inside shooting all day. Uh, I mean, I'm um, inside um editing photos all day. Walk around campus and take pictures." And I was like, "Okay." And I use this like I never had a played with a full frame. And then after that, that's when I like truly learned how how a camera works yeah I was like why are my pictures right and then i <laughs> set, spent 20 minutes because i was like i'm not gonna go back in there and ask him how this works i'm gonna figure this out on my own <laughs> and now you're just turning all the knobs yeah. moving all the sliders <laughs> Yo, like, I was best. youtube on your phone Yo. and in the quad <laughs> and it, basically and then i paid it to, after i saw how the light meter works in the in the viewfinder yeah. of the canon i was like yep. oh shit it's on. And so after that, I never turned turned back and I was in the photography studio. My my professor got mad because I wasn't a photography major and he was like, Yo, Caleb, like you only spend like a day in the studio and you're able to produce like dope stuff and like and it just I fucking hate you because like <laughs> sometimes you're better than my actual like photography students and I was like, Hey, like no one would pay for a photography degree. Um <laughs> But uh no I it was it was cool I started doing that and then I came here and started I got um the first week here I, I actually did took um I took photos for a jewelry company and um and it was really cool because I was actually working with models and um, yeah I had a stylist on site too and I was able, I was just shooting pictures um and I got to really kind of like learn and see how this like this photography works in like big city and everything and so it was that was that was really fun and i um and then doing stuff for my own brand i got to learn and experiment and do stuff and while i was in college i was doing club photography Mm -hmm. so i I learned a lot about like taking pictures in dark rooms and then once my shit got stolen i was just like all right try let's let's switch it up let's try (laughs) a new new body and that's when um Sony was coming out with all their mirrorless stuff and yeah. I had a lot of good reviews. So I, I I bought one of their like beginner cameras just mm-hmm. to see what was going on in a Sony A six hundred. And once I found out that the monitor was in the viewfinder, like in that, like, yeah, I was like, "Are you serious? This is like, <laughs> ama- I can actually see what I'm actually gonna take a photo of without like having to guess." And it's not even guessing, but like theorizing. Yeah. It's just like, wh- like well, why not? And so I, mm-hmm. I went and I got the um like a DSLR. I got a, a shoot with a Sony A7 II, mm-hmm. and I um I picked up a a fifty, a nifty fifty. And yeah. after that, you I was able to do a lot. And then the video on Sony. The only thing I don't like about Sony cameras like taking pictures is the the color profiles were always washed out and i'm a huge color person so it it hurt but like the video on that sucker was just like quality yeah they're all like all their like it's meant for post editing yeah like yeah you take the picture it's kind of flat yeah it's like okay you're supposed to go in and And, brighten it up yeah do the saturation exactly and so i was um i 
and I, w- I already spent so much time on Lightroom that I had a good idea of how to bring back those colors that I wanted to see. So I, I started doing that. And then I met up with um this guy, um Steve, and he did photography as well. And he started doing a little video, doing videos and stuff. And I had all these homies. I met all his friends that were doing videography and all this stuff. And so I started gravitating and learning more and seeing how they edit and all this stuff. And um, then messing around with Premiere Pro. A lot of those the pro the programs seem intimidating until you like get around them. Like for a while, I, yeah. I was using Photoshop. Excuse me, I was using Photoshop for a while. And then I was like, all right, what's Illustrator like? Had Illustrator on my phone. Then I started playing with it on, on the thing. And I was like, this isn't that bad. Yeah. And I went to Premiere and I was like, oh, they're all like. Then I, and I, this whole entire time I was making beats and stuff like that. Yeah. And just seeing how all these programs are all about layering, it kind of just yes. helps you think about like how you can do stuff in post. So when I'm making stuff in like right then, I'm like, how can I fa- add this? Or if I wanted to add this, can I add this in post? Can I do this right. now? And so you start kind of shooting and creating with with it in yeah, mind. Yeah, with like my, later I can do this yes, to it, and it's gonna look bad. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, and that yeah, and so like seeing how all that was related, kind of like it really helped me a lot. And then seeing how my friends, um, people's workflows. Well, I le- I learned that learning somebody. Seeing if you see like if you like somebody's work, you should ask about their workflow. Like, what do they do? How do they get this? Like, how right. do they like post like beginning and then post workflow? Like, how do you prep and then how do you um how do you edit and what's the all that mm-hmm. stuff like? How do you decide which ones you're going to use? I had I was watching my friend shoot a, a promo video and he was going through and he was like chopping. He had two folders mm-hmm. before he even like put every, anything on the timeline he was going through chopping everything up and putting everything in a folder like an a folder and then a b folder mm-hmm. and then from there he would he was putting it piecing it to every, the clips together and i was like okay this is easy now yeah <laughs> yeah because i shot i shot a music video by myself and i was just like good lord this is terrible how do people <laughs> do this i don't ever want to do this and then um one of my friends her boyfriend showed he was a pretty big videographer in colorado colorado mm-hmm. and he would get flown out from place to place nuck fate and he um he showed he's like all right caleb i'm gonna I'm give you a couple pointers like but like keep this shit on wraps and so and he, showed, yeah. it on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> he showed me how like um what he he told me what he was thinking about when he shot a music video and like how when you're shooting music videos what like how you should take advantage of the energy and how important it is when you're shooting with these artists and everything and how many takes you're going to take in reality and like your performance takes and then you're just like the b-roll takes right depending on the type of music video right 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 and um and then from there i was able to and then i I, growing up i always i fucking loved watching music videos like mtv too never my my mtv and mtv jams i like my tv stayed on that for a long <laughs> like i would turn it on and just watch that and do whatever do you have a do you have a favorite music video oh i do what it, there's there's tons i think um r- not rob thick um pharrell has a uh i'm trying to remember what music video it is i like um stunting oh tyler has a pretty good music video he tyler i I really like tyler creators music videos because yeah and frank ocean frank ocean um look out your window when he's wearing a nunchuck uh, a ski mask and nunchucks <laughs> is tyler creator and frank ocean that one was a really cool concept for a music video and then um i like honestly I, i've been i like music videos that sometimes don't have anything to do with the um the the song itself but it's a story in its own yeah but like um this is gonna be an old old one but beyonce and common please let me testify <laughs> um and it just like it talk it, that that one was crazy because it it tells the, the the song tells a story but in the music video acts it out and there's no dialogue except for when beyonce says before you like my love away and it was just like it was just really cool and um yeah there's there's 
and K-pop. K-pop has some crazy <laughs> yo. I, I would I would be lying if I said I wasn't me- mesmerized <laughs> by the coordination of K-pop yo, fans. Yeah, <laughs> yo, when you get a chance, look up Pon Pon. Pon Pon. Pon Pon. Yo, it's this girl. She's like dressed up in this crazy outfit, and the graphic design on there is so insane, bro. Like <laughs> it, it's like if Molly went in acid had a baby and then went into a a a candy shop and and a korean girl was in in there at the same time that's what the music video would look like (laughs) okay (laughs) it's just i don't even know bro it was it's it was insane but that the song was had so much energy and the music video went along with the energy and it was like it was ridiculous and and absurd but i loved all of it yeah i was like all right (laughs) let's like let's do it and then um yeah, so now like my friend he um he started doing music videos and I have a, a a lot of experience with lighting and just talking to people and getting them to do be comfortable in front of camera. Yeah, yeah. And so I've uh I've been able to uh assist him. I've assisted directed music videos now. Like that that shit's super cool cuz um my friend he writes my my friend who shoots the videos and and does photography that we work together with he's actually an author so okay. he'll write um he'll he'll do a write-up for a music video and he'll like this is what i want this is what i want to happen in the music video okay i'll read the write-up and then from there i'll look at the spaces that we were using the studios the houses the airbnbs and all that stuff and i'll frame together where these these things that he puts in this little write-up that these like the storyline i'm like all right so in this area this is where we're gonna have this 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 we're gonna shoot it from this way i'll have a light over here blah 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 over here since it's he's we're gonna in the thing in the write-up it says the guy sees the girl that um we have to create some type of distance we'll shoot this over here blah 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 over here we're gonna shoot this well i'll have a red color for this because he's a bad guy cool boom bam boom i like also like um What's the movie? There's a movie with DMX that had a shit ton of colors. Like, I think it's like, I'm not sure. <laughs> it was there. It was um. But yeah, that, so I started doing that, and now I I we've been doing that for a while, and we uh we teamed up, and that shit's super fun. I've uh, assistant directed on a couple of, like three music videos. And, oh, nice. And it's like, where I, in Colorado, if you made a music video, it was normally like just rap shit. And like mm-hmm. being in New York, I've I never heard about Afrobeat until I came to New York. What is that? It's like it's like a a hodgepodge mixture of African music, reggae, reggaeton, like music from South America, and then Caribbean music. Huh. Okay. And so it's just like this like it's like a really like summery style beat. And mm-hmm. it's like the the dudes are crooning, women are singing, and it's just like Whenever you you know those you know when you see those crazy uh YouTube videos of like people just jumping off tables like slamming their dicks into butts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, you go hear that shit going on in the oh, back. Okay. Um, but it's it's really like it's a it's a it's a beautiful genre, and I was able to um. I wasn't making. I'm not making music videos for rappers per se. I'm making music videos for like these singers, these R and B singers, yeah. these like these like song like all these different type of genres that nest like they get music videos too but they don't get the same amount of love and respect because like, right when you have a music uh, for making a music video for um rapping it's not it's not that hard you kind of just need to have hot chicks the guy rapping at the camera and um there doesn't necessarily need to, need to be a storyline and right 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 but it with um in different genres i mean you can do the same but it it helps contextualize the song if you right. see a lo- like uh, something going on. Right, right. Okay. And um yeah, and then during quarantine I I'll show you once once this is done, I'll show you that my first animation that I did, but my friends were were messing around with this app called Flip Flip a Clip and it was an animation app. And okay. so they were just doing animation and stuff and it was it was cool to see and um hashtag Android Boys right here. Uh, I have a Galaxy Note. You already know. I got to upgrade. I'm, I'm still <laughs> using the S8. I have had it for three years. Really? It's time to Yo, bump it up. You know they made the they made the Galaxy Note 10 the same, but but they made a um small, like oh. it's a normal size phone. 
interesting. Yeah, and it, I I just like it because of stylus. So see, I'm I'm at the point where it's like I want to upgrade to like the next great samsung but the thing is the camera is too powerful on there and i don't want it to like (laughs) i don't want to end up taking a bunch of pictures with my phone instead of practicing with my real camera (laughs) (laughs) that is true that is yo did you i I learned that um snapchat well the reason why android photos look really shitty sometimes on snapchat and your instagram is because when androids use those apps those pro those apps are just screen recording what's there yeah and then iphone their shit is integrated so it's actually like using the actual image from the camera instead of screen recording and yeah like, Fuck them. yeah when i want to make a good instagram story i just take it video <laughs> mode in my phone <laughs> And then upload it. Yeah, and I'm like, pro tip. Yeah. For those you... green bubble folk out there. <laughs> the green bubble army. The green bubble army. <laughs> Yo, we're, yeah. we're there. So, with like music videos, though, um, have you had one that you're like super stoked about? Um, the... have, you, have you had your like triumph moment yet, or are you still like just kind of getting into this and feeling it out and learning? I'm still getting into it and feeling and learning. But um, the first music video I shot was a it was a three day shoot. Yeah, and that was the most I've ever spent on like a video project. Yeah, per se, like shooting, and that was um, that was a really that was I was pretty proud because um I didn't get to edit, but seeing everything come out and play its part and seeing how everything blended perfectly because we didn't even shoot it in order. But like seeing how everything came to fruition was was a visceral feeling, and um and then like we just shot this new music video um for this female artist and uh I haven't that was the first time working with a female artist and mm-hmm. it was um like I was talking about I was talking to my friend about the song and I was like he was like yo the song isn't for uh the song wasn't that she the, the way she made the song it wasn't meant for guys it was for, meant for women but right. she's singing in like lingerie and everything and it was just i was like oh that's crazy and then i thought about how we shot it and it was just like it's just it's gonna work very well and it, i think working with female artists was it was a lot it was fun because you can like you can shoot uh, someone being vulnerable and like sensitive and like soft yeah. opposed to like even I mean even though I'm shooting R and B and like I'm not I mean Tory Lanez is an R and B singer and he's shooting people in the feet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like you don't have to be a soft guy to be do R and B but it's like there's there's still this type of matismo that you have to deal with when you're dealing with like a, a male artist who doesn't yeah. want to be considered looked at as soft and that's not you're not dealing with that type of stuff when it comes with working with um female artists and right so it was really fun and um i i'm excited because like there was just a lot more setup in the in the set and the colors and everything and i kind of like i was going with an ariana kind of type of uh ariana grande type of music video type yeah. of vibe but like laying on soft things yes exactly <laughs> yeah laying on soft things and um <laughs> she was in like a, a fenty like lingerie thingy and it was really tight and it was just um i'm excited to see how that can that how we that just comes together but um and yeah that was that that's the one that i'm looking forward to right now and then where my homie got a drone well he has we already had one drone but he just got one of those like speed racing drones Ooh. and we've been um i've been practicing on it on a uh what's it called an emulator yeah because like this one's like fast fast like but once you get the hang of it you can make for some pretty like bird's eye looking footage and it's gonna be i'm excited to get that going and seeing how we can incorporate that in music videos because like i mean like everybody there's music videos that have drones but i'm trying to take drone music video to a whole nother level (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) taking it where it's never been seen before but um yeah it's it's fun it's a good time it's a great time that's awesome I've been like thinking about like I I do mostly photography mm-hmm. and I'm like I kind of want to do like some videography just so I know it and I was thinking about like shooting a music video just for like whatever yeah. song I like just yeah. to see what the editing process you is should. like and what I can come up with you should you should definitely you should definitely like even like 
what I I did this I my first music video that I shot by myself was I was so fucking bored waiting for the train right and I was like I was sitting there I was listening to this uh, song called Pink Soda by 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 Casal C A S S O W and I was just like. This is a cool. But I list, I was listening to it on repeat, and I was like, I'm so bored. I saw this one dude. He was looking cool. I was like, Yo, bro, do you want to like? Can I just record you real quick? I'm shooting. I'm gonna shoot a video. And he's like, Yeah, sure. And like, I with my camera, my Sony, and my phone camera, I was able to piece together like this um random these random clips that nested like the. I mean, I didn't know. I don't know Casau or anything, but yeah. I was able to um put together all these um clips from the train station and make a music video that went that were kind of went with it and i was able to like mess around with transitions i'm i'm a huge fan i've said it before but i'm a huge fan of layering stuff so like i was layering videos on top of each other because i like the idea of um motion constant motion but different from different perspectives have yeah you, have you ever seen stranger than fiction no it's a it's a movie with will ferrell right but I like I like Will Ferrell and I like the the people who shot that because the intro of that had a lot of um multiple screens on one of him doing different parts oh, and aspects of his day. And so, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and a lot of um a lot of pop bands have like I, they have really good videography too because it's a little bit more creative. I just I wish hip hop music videos were a lot more creative. Yeah. And then um then like what they are now I think. I'm, and I don't know what like I think the the only artist that I see who's really creative with um their music videos is Tyler Creator or um Lyrical Lemonade. Okay. That guy. He he kills it in a lot of his videos, but sometimes it's like it's still the same idea of just like a guy just rapping at a camera yeah. and crazy you're adding in all these special effects later. And I think Tyler he kind of like pushed that. I mean like when you look at like how far music, music like have you seen, you've seen the Missy Elliott music video, right? No, I haven't. I'm when, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all it's all good, bro. Like whenever you get a chance, if you're bored and you're like, what do I want to like? I I want to take acid, but I don't want to take acid. Yeah, watch a Missy Elliott music video. See, I like my favorite video of all time is uh, "Hive" by Earl Sweatshirt and okay. Vince Staples. Okay, it's so moody and like yeah, it's kind of like rapping into the yeah. camera, but they it's so it's so chill and like dark and just the the lighting is so great yeah. it's trippy and then one of, one of my favorite artists is uh tommy cash okay. i don't know if you've heard of him but he's an estonian rapper okay and it's like it's very like uh he has like edm type beats at a lot of points like he has some songs that are just like hard style yeah. pretty much but like his videos are just wild like he's got this song called lil molly and <laughs> all it is is like it's like, you know, like 80s portrait shots where yeah. you have a bunch of families like all in denim yeah. together or like a kid at a piano yeah. or like dancing. It's all those shots with different people and children, but he like put his face on Oh, all of them. I've seen that yeah. video. Yo, that shit is hilarious. Yeah, I love it. Because <laughs> it's just like, you'll be with a white family and it'll just be like, you're like, what? what is going on right now? Yeah. Like he's been eating dinner with a family and it's just like. Oh my god, I've seen that. It's like uh he like for that one he kind of did like the Aphex twin thing where he just put his face on everything. Yeah. But he he has some wild ones. He's very you should check him out. I think you would I think you would like it. I'll I'll take a look. Yeah, I like anything with humor too. Humor's like ludicrous. Ludicrous was one of he had a he's he literally said on on his song song Stand Up, it's like stand up. And every like he would stomp, and everybody would fall down in the music video. And he'd say, "Stand up!" Everybody would get up, and he'd stomp when the beat hit, and they'd fall down again. And mm-hmm. then he literally had a bar. He's like, "Looks like I got a midget hanging from my necklace." In the music video, there was a midget hanging from his fucking <laughs> necklace, and I was like, "This is amazing!" <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I think like liter like when you play when you say literal things, and then you it's in the video that that's that's hilarious. But yeah, and then um, during quarantine, I I got bored and I taught myself how to do some animations. Yeah, so let's, let's let's talk about that. Uh, we got like twenty minutes left. Let's yeah. like get into this because this is pretty cool. What you've been able to do in this time? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So during quarantine, I uh, well, I got Procreate for Christmas, or I got an iPad for Christmas. Um, and I I started playing around on Procreate, and um, I learned that you can animate off of that. And then I I watched a couple of YouTube videos of people just doing 
their own style of animation. And I, I am, a, I did photography first and I, I was like, how can I bring photography is such a stagnant image. Yeah. And I was like, how can I bring motion and energy into something that's not there? Right. Right. I, even if like that, even if, I mean, you can shoot a, a photo and have like stagnant energy, like just energy there capturing energy. But I was like, how can I bring energy? And I was like, well, I could animate it. And then, I just started experimenting with um, different types of animation, and um, yeah, I was a. Uh, I met this. I met this girl who, who was looking for an animator at the time, and um, I showed her. She was like, "Yo, send me some of your work," and I sent her some of my um, the projects that I was working on right then and there. And um, a lot of the animation, I've I'm so, I've self taught through animation, so a lot of everything is trial and error. Yeah, and um. And I, I mean, shoot, I haven't even, yeah, it's a lot of it's just trial and error. And I've, I was, I've never been like an excellent, like drafting draw, like artist, yeah, but yeah. like I can draw like my, with my, I very, I draw very like cute cartoony doodle type of drawings and illustrations. Yeah, yeah. So I was learning how to animate that. Then I started bringing that to photography and drawing these cute little animation doodles on top of it. And then I was like, what if I just draw directly on these photos and change what's already there? Mm-hmm. And like, like definitely like, like a, a, like a different portal, like Rick and Ro- Rick and Morty. I'm like, what if yeah. we all have these like different facades? Cause yeah, like yeah. the picture only shows you one aspect of this person. Like, mm-hmm. and so I was like, what if I can draw another aspect? And so I started animating these people. And my one of my friends is a stylist. So she sends me all these fire photos of like these high fashion and everything. So I just started doodling on that. And this girl, I sent, sent some of that to this girl. And she um, got me in contact with um, some people who are working on a Lupe Fiasco and Virgil Abloh project. Mm-hmm. And um, he is like, yo, I, I love your stuff. It's 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 weird and it's different and um this is I'm, I'm working on this project here's a song let me know what you can think well, like let me know what you think of and um it was a uh, shoes by lupe fiasco virgil abloh and i forgot the producer's name but it, i follow the producer on instagram and um and lupe fiasco and it was cool because i was like yo i follow both of these guys and now i get to work on a project with both of them yeah and um and yeah, I, so I came up with um I had two ideas for this song. It's called Shoes. And uh I it I, at first it was hard because I that was it's like the first type of it was the first project ever I ever got for animation ever 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 and I never w- would have even thought because I would <laughs> only been animating for uh animating for I think for less than six months yeah yeah, yeah a very short <laughs> yeah time. like three or four months into animating someone is like hey would you be down to do this for spotify and vivo and i was like yeah i guess and i am um, try by trial and error i am um, I-, I sent them different versions of some of the concepts i would talk to them all the time and this is when i, I was in colorado when it when i first got it and i like i was working on it while I was flying back to New York (laughs) (laughs) and my, um, in the airport and all this stuff. And so it was, it was cool and it's, it's fun. And it's, it's kind of, um, it's tedious because you, you have to draw frame by frame, but also it's kind of meditative. Right. Kind of just get to lose yourself. And that's a lot of, I mean, I'm I'm sure you've, you felt that way when you're editing your photos, you kind of get in the zone. Yeah, there's there's a specific mood. I feel like I feel like when I am like picking photos, mm-hmm. like am like I'm going to talk about this in a later episode yeah. with one of our future guests. But like when I shoot comedy shows, I'll take 1,500 photos. Yeah. I need to go back through, see which ones are both in focus and good pictures. Yeah. And during that process of just like like literally marking everything as a one or a zero. Mm-hmm. I like to listen to a podcast, and okay. then when I actually start editing, I like to just like jam out to some music. Okay, then I can like really focus. focus and like the trouble with it is that after so much time, it's like I start to feel like my eyes are t- are yeah. tired, and I just like have to take a break for a minute because like otherwise, I'm gonna come and just like do shitty edits. Yeah, because I'm just getting this muscle memory and just oh maybe this person 
for this photo stood like a foot back from the lighting mm-hmm. and it needs different settings. Yeah. And if I'm like not in, if I'm too in the zone, I'll just overlook that. Yeah. And you just like, every everything gets the same, the same type of thing. I no, I completely. I shot, I shot one where everyone was after dark, but they had like some pretty decent, they had like two big lights in the front. Yeah. And so everyone was lit up the exact same way and all the performers stood in almost the exact same oh, spot. And I was like, beautiful. this is a dream. I edited oh. three of them and just like, boom, apply to all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the best. I um, I, I was literally going to ask you that. Do you listen to music when you edit? I, I listen to, I usually, I like to have background noise. I, I like, do you listen to a specific type of music when you edit? No, it's just kind of whatever I'm whatever listening to. Okay. I, I just like mostly like right now like i listened i'm a, I'm a big metal head but yeah. i don't listen to a lot in new york city because yeah. i feel like the vibe just doesn't match up like yeah, in colorado when you're in the mountains yeah, or like in the plains listen to something hardcore it's like very cool it's yeah. like you get that like ominous feeling yeah. but here in like new york i almost always listen to like pop or like rap or like yeah. electronic stuff yeah i've been vibing with charlie xcx like the last like <laughs> week or two yo you were tweeting that i saw that you're like i can't wait to get off of work and listen to this new charlie yo that was funny um no i i listen to a lot of podcasts and i've been trying to listen to more music now more than ever just because i'm trying to make more music now and so like i've just been listening to a lot more um arm not r&b like indie pop okay yeah yeah. And like it's just shit that you like i like i like singing with my music so yeah. like, i play it <laughs> super loud and i'm usually singing and then when i'm singing i'm like clicking away and just like okay and, and, like, there you go bopping my head but once i when i'm really uh most of the time when i'm rating my photos i have to rate like when i'm picking the photos that i want to use i have to do that in silence really <laughs> yeah like because i'm really focusing i'm like all right these <laughs> sounds like a punishment mind. yeah <laughs> look through two thousand photos in silence <laughs> yeah yeah so like I, I do that a lot and then um and then like i feel you because i used to do concert photography right right and like um you kind of you have to like literally like go through and like analyze the whole entire photo and then maybe like do some like light editing like can i bring this photo back no it's a yeah. shitty photo all right well whatever it's what a else bummer I yeah i shot one that like they had one light and it went out halfway like halfway through Damn. the show it's after dark and all i have is my little like aperture mc yeah. light and i was like i'm gonna give this to you guys to use but <laughs> you i don't know how long it will last yeah. And those, I was shooting at ISO 5000. It was like, I I literally went to the person who hired me and he's a great guy, nice, great comedian. But I went up to her and I was like, I just want you to know, this is a very not ideal for photos. We got some really good ones in the beginning, but the rest is just kind of a crap shoot. Be grainy. I'm like, these look like they're made of sand. Like that's, <laughs> that's what these are looking like. Grits. <laughs> Hope you like grits, because I got a lot. Um, No, I, I feel that a lot. So in the in the future, do you have like um, do you have a direction you want to take with animation or videography or photography? I, I think you mentioned that your next thing is like drone footage, right? Yeah, that's like what you're trying to break into. Yeah. Um. Either so I'm in college. I learned about leadership. I took a leadership class, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I learned like my my goal is either to be a comedian or a creative director of some type of okay uh, you could do that i could see you doing that for sure so yeah i like that's um that's what i'm aiming for and so i know in order to be a creative director you got to learn everything and steve Mm -hmm. jobs was one of the greatest i don't like as much as i shit on apple like all the time it doesn't go a day where i don't shit on apple he was a mastermind in the part where he took all these people who did very, very great work and things. And yeah. he was like, this is what I want. I, and I see what you've done in the past. I know you can do this and let them do it. And it's a hands-on approach, like he right. hands-off approach. He took, right. And so I went to, I, and he, and his thing was, he didn't know how it, it worked. He just knew what he wanted. Right. I know how it works. So now I can effectively communicate with people how I want it. Right. And, right. but let them still be great. Cause yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I'm not a helicopter type of person. Like I'm not going to hover over you. I like 
if I if I'm working with somebody, I'm working with them because I like their style. I, there's something that I, right. I like. There's like that trust and respect. Yeah, like, exactly. you're here because I like what you do, so I'm going to trust you to do your job. Exactly. Carry through on the vision. So animation, I don't. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on doing animation just because what I've been, I haven't really seen anybody doing the type of animation that I've been doing. Yeah, and yeah. I I really want to. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to add it, the type of animation that I'm doing over videos and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. so that's um, a whole new like wheelhouse of things that I, I'm trying to like understand and figure out. And then with videography and photography, I, I went to um, my friend, like I said, my friend's a stylist. So I, and I haven't been taking done doing as much photos that I'd like to. So I'm probably, um, I'm probably going to do a, a photo shoot in a studio i already have a model that i want to use and um do some do a photo shoot with some fancy clothes and try and um get more experience in editorial photography nice because it's like you can be really as dramatic as you want that's when you can kind of like be weird like (laughs) you can take pictures of like dudes in dresses and goats and overalls and people be like high fashion (laughs) 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 and so like uh i just want to get weird but yeah, let's see. See, I that's 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 what I'm planning on. The some of the stuff that I've been um, experimenting with, and then um, who knows what happens. Yeah, I mean, I could I could totally see you being like creative director for projects and yeah. stuff. Like, I'd love to see it. Like, you do <laughs> you do so many things. Like, honestly, you guys, you should definitely follow Caleb. Uh, check out his centric vibes. He posts all the photos he's talking about, all the animation, really cool stuff. Um, so. This is your day job, right? Right now? Yes. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I don't. I, I'm. I'm not doing anything else at the moment. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I, I. I was teaching. I worked at an office for a little bit, and now, yeah, this. That's my day job. I'm just freelancing, and uh, hustling and getting it day by day. Nice. And uh, I guess through your creative journey, what is the moral of your creative journey? If you've got a, a center point theme. In like one sense, do you have like some that has carried with you this whole way that you've thought about? That's a good question. Wow, what is the? Moral? Yeah, I waited an hour and a half to <laughs> spring it on you. <laughs> um, the creative theme is um, um, even if you don't like it put it out anyway because nine times out of ten you're just being super fucking hard on yourself (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm i'm my own worst critique so like aren't we all yeah and it's like i've i have like i still have stuff that i've worked on that i haven't posted that i'll share with my friends and be like caleb why haven't you put like i they told me i'm a content hoarder (laughs) and i was just like what and so like yeah don't be afraid to um put put that stuff out there and people what i've learned is people love the product they they like they might like the product but they love the process oh okay so they they uh, so sometimes they'll they like they like seeing the journey and right right seeing how when i first started animation and then i just did this lupe fiasco thing they're like damn caleb like you just like i remember when you were just drawing literally a trash a trash bag just floating in the air that was like my <laughs> first animation was a garbage bag just like floating and now i'm i drew i drew this thing with the for um lupe fiasco and um virgil and it was kind of just like you wouldn't have expected from that point to get to this point and just like right trust in the process constantly look for for ways to learn and adapt yeah yeah um, be adaptive and just don't be so hard on yourself really yeah because like (laughs) that's that's, a good one i'm i'm super hard on myself and like my friends will hear me talk to myself and like damn caleb you need to be easier on yourself i'm like (laughs) no it's not right (laughs) and um but yeah just trust in your trust in your process um adapt and don't be too hard on yourself learn to laugh at yourself and like if you fuck up like (laughs) it's okay it's kind of like it's kind of like comedy (laughs) yeah i mean (laughs) comedy is the hardest because it's just like i'm 
I, everyone is so hard on themselves. Yeah. Like I'm like, I've been doing this two years and like, I've got lots of great material, but yeah. three months after I write it, I'm like, fuck that material. It's yeah, terrible. I exactly. hate it. You're like, who the fuck do I People think like, I, I am? I love that joke. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> no, I, I think it. with my photography, some of it, I'm like, like, especially when I started, I was like, I don't want to be overconfident. Yeah. And, but now it's like, I can be uh, reasonably yeah. critical and find the sweet spot where I'm like, okay, this picture, I know I could have done like a hair better, mm. but I know when this person just crops it and puts it on Instagram, mm. they're going to love yeah. it. So, <laughs> Yeah, and that's the, knowing your, know, know who you're making stuff for and like who your audience is. Yep. And like. Know your audience. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah. Like, like when I took pictures from, uh, for you guys at the, um, Lee show at the, the, um, the, the karaoke, karaoke bar. bar. Yeah. And everybody was. Excuse me, geeking about um those those pictures. I was like, yo, these are like I've taken pictures like that before, and but they're like everybody's like, yo, these pictures are fucking tight, bro. Yeah. I was like, yo, it like I liked it because it made me remember that not everybody ever like always yeah. has dope photos of themselves. Yeah, and like it's nice. That's the, and that was the whole reason of why I did for like one of the main reasons why I did photography is just to like I like capturing things that weren't necessarily there. Mm-hmm. Like I. There's something in this person that I see that seems right that they may not be able to see. And if I take a picture and I get them comfortable enough, I'll be able to capture that and share that thing that I see within this person with them. Right. And it like it boosts. Conf- I remember I asked this one girl to do a, a photo shoot for me for my brand. After that, it literally changed her lifestyle. She went to the gym every day. She started doing all this stuff. She has 30,000 followers on Instagram. Yo, low key, bro. Low key. She, she's like, yo, Caleb, thank you. She's like, she sent me a message random. She's like, yo, thank you for like in- involving me in your brand. Like, you never had to do that. You gave me the confidence to like, um, to find value in myself when wow. I didn't. And it, that shit, like, that shit, like, it stuck with me because I was like, it was just. She was my friend. I was like, "Hey, you want to like? I like I like your look. You want to you want to do a shoot?" And I guess she never she didn't really feel she wasn't feeling good. And I was able to help her feel good and give her build value, find the value that I saw in her, and she saw it back. And she just ran with it. And now wow. she's out here posting thirst traps, living her <laughs> best fucking life. <laughs> You're welcome. I created another thought. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like what a what a great story for that. <laughs> yeah. It's just I I like I have the con- I've always I'm a very confident person when it comes to like me and so yeah. I and I and I understand that not everybody was was came up in a household where that was like okay or people encouraged that type yeah, of yeah. thing. And so I like photography is my way of helping people. It's photography therapy. Yeah. Honestly, is what I offer. Um, DM <laughs> me and we can talk about it. I'll set up a session and uh, we'll talk about your feelings and shoot. <laughs> See, I'm like the opposite. Like, <laughs> I I feel very detached from my body. Okay. I, I don't really have a good image of like how I look uh-huh. like. I dress very clean and simple because yeah. I'm like, okay, this looks nice, yeah. I think. But the rest of it is just like, I feel like I'm just, I am just the speck of light between my eyes. <laughs> and I'm just going through life. And I don't feel like, I'm like, like I'm surprised. Like there's there's times when like I would like wear a certain outfit or something. And like I would see like people like look at me and I'd be like, I exist. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, you noticed me? Yeah, I'm just like, I just feel like a fly on the wall, even if I'm the tallest person in the room and like yo. the person with the best set sometimes just like, oh, wait, you, you thought it was funny? <laughs> you, yo, I, that, I, I know everyone <laughs> laughed, but you thought it was funny? Yeah, oh my God. Like, yo, that, that, sh- that part is always crazy when you're just like, wait you thought it and you're like what do you mean me i thought yeah. it's you and not not to like brag like i'm not like oh i'm an amazing comedian but sometimes it's like i do well and then like i'm even surprised when people give me the feedback of like good job afterward I'm like, yeah what? see like, i i matter i yeah, exist I, like i can make an impact on people <laughs> yo <laughs> like <laughs> facts i my favorite part about doing that is it's just like hearing hearing the jokes that stick with people like it because it's just like oh yeah it's oh, yeah. all the insane shit that comes in your mind and you're like that's the one that resonated with you i'm so happy because that one was the one i hated <laughs> i hated myself the most for there's all these like oh the comedy comedy is different yeah it's this different type of creativity because it's almost like 
spoken word poetry, but like with punchlines. Yeah, that. that's the hardest part. It's like you can be great at public speaking, but you've never spoke publicly with the intent of being funny yeah. every ten seconds. Uh, yes, and that is yo. That is exact because I like I, I took well, I took public speaking in school so many fucking times. I was class president of in high school. Yeah, bro. yeah. Like, I could. See I it. literally was in the assembly being a fucking dickhead, just calling kids out, being like, but like. <laughs> Being in a room with people that I I don't know, and I'm just like, all right, this is this is me. This is this is what I do. Or and I try and I honestly I don't even talk about any of the stuff that I do on my comedy set and yeah. the sets. So it's just like, it's just like it's it's hard to sh- it's it's just comedy is comedy is just a different beast. Oh yeah, and stick around, viewers. I will be interviewing comedians, but I'm going to try not to exclusively interview. <laughs> people about comedy because there's just so much of that you can geek out for forever yeah we could just talk shit forever so but yeah um thank you for coming on thank you for um, having me I, once again this is caleb clark yes. um you can follow him at caleb.makes.sense yes. like dollar cents and then also follow his like uh his actual like project instagram yeah. which is centric vibes yes check out cones collective wait yes. for their next drop yeah it'll be probably next year or whenever Ooh. whenever rona's cleared up well we'll, <laughs> we'll get shit popping again the post rona drop post rona dro- <laughs> yes yeah, exactly what i'm gonna call it now <laughs> the post roni okay well thank you guys for tuning in once again i am maxim allen uh this is don't quit your day job podcast you can follow this podcast at dqydj underscore pod on instagram (laughs) i know it's stupid but it's don't quit your day job just all the first letters underscore pod check me out give me a follow leave a leave a like and a comment um hope you guys enjoy and tune in next week yeah bye bye